Welcome everyone at the third uh, lecture of the electron microscopy lectures. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the first main component of an electron microscope, which is the gun. As you can see, I already prepared some sort of image, which is basically the structure of the gun. I will explain you all the different parts of the drawings uh, during the lecture. So this is where, where we begin. So the essence of the electron microscope uh, is, is of course the electrons or more specifically is the electron beam because the electron beam is used to create the image or uh, interact with the material and produce different products which can later be analyzed or processed in order to get some deeper information about the composition or the structure of the material. But <coughs> first uh, we have to talk about uh, the generation of the electrons. So the, the electrons are obtained from the source which is the filament by thermionic emission. So let me write it down. Thermionic emission or let's use TE as abbreviation. So this is basically that uh, at high temperatures electrons become sufficiently energetic to overcome the work function of the cathodes or filaments material and escape it. So basically what happens in the gun is that uh, we run current through the filament which makes it hot and it is really hot and uh, due to this temperature rise the electrons become energetic uh, and they will be so energetic that they can overcome the work function which is basically the energy that uh, is needed for the electrons to leave the surface of the material if we oversimplify the things and uh, they will escape it and then once these electrons escape the material we use a electrostatic field which will basically pull out the electrons from the vicinity of the surface of the filament and it will also accelerate them and it will also interact uh, with them in uh, many different ways but uh, yeah we have to know that uh, how the temperature and other details influence this kind of thing with the electrons. So first, uh, for example, let's talk about the current density which can be obtained from the filament. So the current density, let me write it down, can be obtained by using the Richardson law which basically tells that uh, so the current density of the cathode that is the C index here so we have a materials parameter which uh, depends on the on the material of the filament and then uh, we have the temperature squared and then we have an exponential function here and basically here is where we use the work function of the material and this is different for each uh, materials and then the Boltzmann's parameter times the temperature. So this is how we can uh, get the current density. So let's uh, talk about the filament or the cathode uh, a little bit. So the, the radius of this uh, filament is very small so it is like uh, approximately 100 micrometers but uh, it can vary from uh, machine to machine so it's different and uh, 
So it has a sort of V or hairpin shape at the tip. So so we have some sort of like this tip, and then this tip has a has like a radius, like this, and then this is also the the radius is approximately 100 micrometer, and uh, just to get some grasp of this 100 uh, micrometer, uh, the average thickness of a human hair is roughly like 50 to 80 micrometers. So this is like uh, twice as large or s sort of. And uh, then uh, we have some temperature of course due to the current applied on the on the filament. So we have some uh, temperature which is uh, like usually 200, uh, 2700 uh, Kelvin or roughly like 2427 Celsius degrees Celsius. Uh, just to put these temperatures in context, the melting point of the steel of some melting point sorry point of steel. So the melting point of the steel is just around uh, 1500 degrees Celsius or uh, roughly now just let's round the numbers Kelvin <coughs> so you can see that uh, of course this is made of uh, tungsten if I haven't mentioned it so the filament material is tungsten But this is supposed to be a W here. So of course uh, tungsten has higher melting point than the steels but uh, it's still very interesting. And then this wall device, I mean the gun, is in vacuum but uh, this vacuum has to be very high so very very low pressure because at this temperature the tungsten filament actually evaporates so the lifetime of this uh, filament is limited uh, because uh, it is subjected to degradation so the lower the vacuum or the higher the temperature the shorter the life the shorter the lifetime of the filament is. So we have to take uh, care about that and uh, use a high vacuum and have some acceptable temperature for the filament. So we have to compromise between these two things. Usually uh, these filaments survive somewhere between 40 to 80 hours in normal wor working conditions but uh, if you increase the temperature too much, these uh, hours can drop down even to like a few hours. So we have to be very careful. And then uh, we have generated the electrons. So we heated up the, the filament. Sorry. So we heated up the filament. And uh, we have to pull them out from that part, I mean from the tip of the filament and uh, like focus them and accelerate them towards the other parts of the electron microscope so they have to cross the optics, the magnetic lens and they have to reach the specimen. So the electrons are accelerated by a high voltage which is roughly between let's say one to 50,000 kilovolts and then this uh, potential is uh, applied between the cathode and the anode so between the filament and uh, these anode plates which you can uh, see because the filament is, is the cathode itself so and then the anode is the 
anode plate outside this uh, cage or cylinder. So I mentioned this uh, cylinder, this uh, Van Hart cylinder, which is a grid cap or a cylinder around the filament. And then uh, this is biased between, let's say, 0 to 500 volts with respect to the filament. So there is a potential difference between the filament and the cylinder. And uh, as you can see, I drew some lines with uh, different colors. The blue one is uh, corresponding to the electric field between the cylinder and the anode. And uh, the black lines, uh, basically the lines of the electrons. So due to this uh, bias, we form an electric field which uh, causes the emitted electrons to converge to, to a crossover of a dimension D0. So you see that uh, we have these blue lines which are, uh, which are representing the equipotentials. And uh, this electric field uh, focuses basically uh, the stream of electrons or the yeah, basically the stream of the electrons into a convergence point here, D0. So these blue lines are uh, the equi once more equipotentials produced between the cap and the anode. And uh, if we have uh, like a negative, zero or plus or uh, sorry, positive voltages, so the zero voltage is basically at the filament and then uh, as we go towards the grid cap it goes towards the negative side so roughly towards negative 500 which was the bias uh, uh, potential and then if we move from the zero towards the anode then uh, we have this uh, 50,000 volts so then, as I mentioned, the black lines are corresponding to the path of the electrons. And then, uh, as you can see, this D0 is the convergence. So this uh, Van Helt uh, cylinder focuses the electrons. And uh, we also know that the intensity or the the intensity distribution of the electrons at this uh, convergence point, so at uh, D0, is, uh, uh, can be described with a Gaussian distribution. And then uh, the current density at this point represents the current that could be concentrated into a focused spot on the specimen if there are no aberrations in the lens. So if you have perfect optics uh, after this D0 point, then uh, you can have the same uh, current density on the specimen. And then uh, this can be also described. So JB, so B is like the beam. So this is like four times IB. So this is current density and this is the current pi times d0. And then uh, we want to know what is the maximum current density and uh, this is usually described by the, the brightness. So let's say that the the maximum current density is the brightness So let's use beta for that. And uh, that is basically four times IB uh, divided by pi times D zero times alpha zero squared. So alpha zero is just like uh, the maximum like spread angle for these uh, electrons. 
because they converge at d0 but then they start to diverge and then that's that angle the alpha 0 describes that <coughs> and uh, we can cal calculate the the maximum of this and uh, if we get the maximum is that is basically like uh, jc so the uh, current density times the electric charge times the acceleration voltage and then this divided by the pi times the Boltzmann's uh, constant times the temperature. So the brightness of the of the beam basically it, it uh, can be optimized with the bias resistor so if we change the uh, the bias resistor because this is uh, as you can see a variable resistor so as the resistor changes so we change the resistance by turning the potentiometer or sort of uh, or something like that then the negative bias voltage uh, will also change of course and then this will change the electrostatic potentials around the cathode so it will move the these uh, equipotential surfaces in different uh, ways and also it will change the convergence uh, point so this d can be shifted and also alpha can be shifted so if we apply like low bias then the field gradient the electric field gradient will be uh, weak and then uh, this will cause a very ineffective focusing therefore the electrons uh, see the positive gradients toward the anode and then uh, this will cause uh, high beam current but uh, d0 will be also large so this uh, spot basically will be larger and uh, the brightness will be not uh, so optimal so so this is not so good and uh, also if we apply too strong bias then uh, that will cause uh, very strong uh, negative equipotentials which will <laughs> basically repel the electrons back to the filament so uh, the electrons will leave the filament but uh, the electric field will be so strong around this area that uh, the electrons will turn back because electrons also have negative uh, charge so if they meet a negative uh, field then of course uh, that will cause repulsion and uh, this will also mean that if the electrons are repelled back towards the source then IB, so the beam current and also the brightness uh, will be zero and uh, what we can do is uh, we can change the distance between the filament and the cylinder the Van Hout uh, cylinder and then we can alter the electrostatic field and then uh, also we can of course change the bias resistance so change the resistor the variable resistor here and then with this we can uh, maximize the beta so the brightness and uh, there will be an optimal value but uh, I should tell you that not all devices allow to change this uh, distance between the filament and the cylinder so that might not be an option but uh, usually the manufacturers um, optimize this already but uh, let me quickly draw you the correlation between the bias voltage and the beam current so here you can see the two curves so let's start with IB or the beam current or emission current so as you can see if you increase or if you 
increase the bias voltage uh, towards the negative side then uh, you will decrease the current so that's what I told you before so if you change the bias current and uh, change it towards the negative values and it will be more and more uh, negative then the electric field will actually repel the electrons back to the source so this is what happens uh, here in the lower parts so there will be like basically zero I could not draw nicely but uh, th this curve should converge to zero and then with the brightness uh, you start to increase or decrease the bias voltage depends on the sign but uh, the absolute value is increasing so you increase the absolute value and then you see that uh, you have a nice increase in the brightness but then uh, after time this brightness drops very suddenly and uh, these two things are in correlation with, e with each other so let me explain that now so you can see that uh, the IB the beam current will not increase after time but the filament uh, current can be still increased and then uh, we can see that there is a point where these this saturation occurs and uh, let's call this operating uh, point so this is basically the optimal value for these uh, two values so this uh, saturation occurs because as IF goes about the current that is necessary for the emission the bias voltage also goes up causing the negative uh, field to increase which uh, actually limits the rise in the beam current because again if you increase the negative field you will start to repel the electrons back to the source so this is a sort of uh, self-regulating process and uh, why do we want to increase the brightness well two things uh, we can improve the resolution of our microscopes and the sensitivity of our microscopes so we can have uh, better spots like smaller uh, spots for the beam and uh, the brightness of the filament can be increased by either increasing the high voltage the E0 or uh, we can increase the current density at the cathode so these two are the parameters which can be changed to change the brightness but again we have to be very careful so in uh, tungsten filaments the parameter which we can change to increase the JC the current density in the cathode is the temperature so from let's say 2700 Kelvin or 2427 Celsius degrees degrees Celsius we go up by 300 degrees to 3000 Kelvin the JC will be increased by a factor of uh, 5 but the lifetime of the filament from around 60 hours will go down to roughly one hour so you really have to consider what is more important for you you want to have good resolution for a very short amount of time or you want to save some money and other resources and uh, work with lower resolution so because of the inefficient operation of these tungsten uh, cathodes or tungsten filament based guns there are other types of uh, guns developed like uh, lanthanum hexaboride uh, cathodes or uh, field emission guns so in the next uh, lectures 
in lecture four and lecture five, <clears throat> I, I am going to talk about those things. So there will be two more lectures about the guns, uh, about the two different guns, and I will tell you about their basic principles, how they operate, how they work, and how they generate the electrons and everything. And uh, after that, uh, we are going to study the magnetic lenses of the electron microscope. So I hope that uh, this lecture was somewhat uh, interesting and uh, useful. And uh, yeah, I will try to produce the next lecture as soon as possible. So see you at the next lecture.